dissecting the big six Canadian bank earnings can be a full-time job. So we've boiled it down for you to the seven things you need to know about what happened this quarter, and more importantly, what to watch ahead. Justin Flowerday, Portfolio Manager at TD Asset Management, joins me today. Let's start off with number one, Justin. So the profit at the big banks uh, beat expectations. Um, yes, it did. And uh, in Q2, we saw all six of the big six banks come in with, with profit that was ahead of expectations. Um, we were looking for 4% year-over-year earnings per share growth, and we got 6% um, year-over-year earnings per share growth. So a strong quarter um, across the board. And when you think about the backdrop here, we've got um, the potential for headwinds in terms of credit in Alberta. Um, we've got a Canadian economy that printed a negative GDP number in Q1. I think the banks came through with some solid results. And number two was all about dividends, and we saw some hikes. We did. Uh, we saw three out of the six banks hike dividends in the quarter. Um, two of them were expected. So we were expecting Bank of Montreal to go. That's their regular schedule, and, and National Bank as well, along with their regular schedule. What we didn't expect was CIBC. And so we saw another dividend hike from CIBC, and this is the third straight quarter that they've hiked the dividends. So that was a, a, a nice surprise to see. And I would just also mention that in terms of capital um, allocation, the, the banks continue to look at kind of dividends and acquisitions uh, in terms of um, deploying capital, and buybacks remain kind of the third choice for management teams. All right. And number three, capital markets. Yeah, the capital markets segment for the banks um, really did the heavy lifting in the quarter. And when you think about what drove that, uh, a lot of it had to do with trading revenue. So trading revenue in the quarter uh, across the group was up 15% year over year. And when you think about on absolute terms where we sit now in terms of trading revenue, we're at the highest level we've been in, uh, in five years. And so you've got companies like Royal Bank and National Bank who have really large capital markets divisions um, benefiting from this trend. And number four, let's look at the retail side of the banking business. Yeah, and, and the word I would use for the retail business right now is resilient. Um, we saw earnings up 5% year over year. So not spectacular, but resilient. And, you know, it's, it's kind of the similar trends we've been seeing, which is a loan growth that's been coming through in the mid-single digits, so kind of 4 5 6% loan growth. And then this quarter, what we got was um, a little bit of net interest margin expansion on a sequential basis. So the um, Bank of Canada cut rates in January, and then the following quarter, the banks were able to actually expand their net interest margins. That's a really positive thing for the banks. Mm -hmm. Number five, uh, the capital ratios, how are they doing? So um, capital for the banks remains really healthy. And so just to remind everyone, um, when we're talking about capital, we're talking about the regulatory capital that the banks have to hold in order to meet the, the requirements. And so we refer to um, tier one common equity as the most common uh, capital ratio. And there continues to be a nice build there. And we saw um, about 33 basis points of capital get added um, during the quarter across the group. And so, you know, we've got CIBC at 10.8%. Um, we've got uh, Bank of Nova Scotia at 10.6%. Every one of the banks is in an excess capital position with the ability to start deploying capital in a meaningful way. Now, if we look ahead, uh, number six, what's the outlook for things like credit growth? Right. Well, you know, credit would be one of the um, things that would keep me up at night with respect to the banks. And, you know, it, it's been one of these really nice things to have for the banks where we've seen this tailwind, um, which has helped earnings over the last five years. So $8 billion in earnings has um, come from just credit recoveries over the last five years. And does that have a lot to do with lower interest rates? It does. It does have a lot to do with uh, lower interest rates. It has to do with um, the economy improving as well and, and the economy remaining on solid footing. Um, what I would say is that these credit tailwinds are now behind us. And we're now entering into this neutral stage where credit is probably not going to be a tailwind nor a headwind. Mm -hmm. um, my hope is that we remain in this neutral stage for quite some time. And I think we can as long as the, the economy remains uh, on, on solid footing. All right. And number seven, earnings growth. 
So when thinking about earnings over the next kind of two years, I would uh, be expecting about mid single digit earnings growth. And um, that's going to come from the continuation of trends that we've seen, which is loan growth continuing in that mid single digit range. I'm not expecting a, a huge uptick from NIMS, but I'm not expect, expecting NIMS, which are net interest margins, to be a headwind either. Um, and as long as credit remains stable, we should be able to eke out you know, 5% earnings growth. So Royal and TD have been among your favorite banks. Is that still the case? And is there anything else you like? Yes, so Royal and TD are definitely among the favorites um, and they continue to be. The other one I'm gonna add to the list is CIBC. And CIBC has had some challenges in the last uh, couple of years with the loss of the aeroplane um, business, but they've overcome those challenges and now they're, they're not facing those tough comparisons anymore. And under the new management team, which is being led by Victor Dodig, I've seen some things that I, that I really like. Um, number one, I've seen some strong execution in their Canadian retail franchise. Their capital markets business also continues to perform well. Um, and then they've got this, this U.S.-based um, wealth franchise, which they're looking to grow and looking to deploy capital in order to grow. And so I combine that with the fact that they're trading at uh, 9.8 times 2016 earnings, um, which is the lowest in the group. Uh, the fact that they've got a dividend yield of 4.5%, which is the highest in the group. The fact that they have the highest uh, regulatory capital ratios in the group. It's, it's looking like uh, an attractive opportunity at current levels. The one risk to this story is that um, it is overweighted in Canada. It's got less diversification um, than most of the other banks. And so if there were to be some additional headwinds across the Canadian economy, they would probably be more exposed than the other banks. All right. Thank you very much, Justin. Thank you. I've been joined by Justin Flowerday, Portfolio Manager at TD Asset Management. Thanks for watching.